Hello and welcome to Learn to Drive the Easy Way. I'm approved driving instructor Michael Gambin and I'm going to show you how to drive manual, automatic and cars fitted with disability controls in the easiest way possible. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And remember to hit the subscribe button underneath to see all of our videos. So in this section, we're going to talk about the independent drive section of the driving test. This will last around 20 minutes and could be done either at the beginning, middle or at the end. Now, there's two different ways the examiner could ask you to do this. The majority of cases will be asked to follow the sat nav, with only one in five being asked to follow the signs. Now, if you are asked to follow the sat nav, the examiner will provide their own. You will not have to bring your own and you will not have to program it either. The examiner will set it up themselves, but you are allowed to change the settings. So if you do want to change the zoom or the volume, feel free to ask. You can also change it from day to night mode as well. If you do have certain SEN conditions. Now, with either part of the independent drive, it is very important to remember that you are allowed to go the wrong direction. It is not a driver fault and nor is it a serious either. So if you do find yourself in a left turn only lane and you're supposed to go straight, just turn left. It's not a problem at all. The examiner or the sat nav will redirect you. Now, the one thing that people do pick up faults for, whether it's a driver fault, minor, or a major fault, serious or dangerous, is for not taking quick glances at the navigation or the signs. So this will cause the driver to either veer off of their course, so swerving left or swerving right, or potentially missing hazards in front, so not seeing the traffic in front is slowing down, or traffic lights. So it's very important that when you are driving, you have quick little glances at either the sat nav or at the signs rather than just staring you need to know what's going on in front of you so that is the biggest reason why people fail for the navigation or independent drive section of the test so the video is now going to show you the sat nav type first and then the following the signs after and as always feel free to put a comment in the comment section below and i will get back to you as soon as i can So, things to be careful of is to make sure that you're not just solely worried about the, the sound of the sat-nav. So when it's telling you where to go, look at the sat-nav as well. Now, we can see on the sat-nav, it wants us to go straight across. And other things that will happen is the sat-nav might say in... 1.6 miles to turn right that's a long long way so don't move into the right lane for instance if you're on a dual carriageway wait until you're around five six hundred yards from the junction before you think about changing lane obviously if there's a lot of traffic then think about moving a bit earlier also, take note on the sat nav of all the roads because it might say take the next road on the left, for instance. Um, you might see that there's another little one just before, or it might say in 300 yards turn right, and there could be three roads on the right. So have a little look for the lines and see which one you need to go into. Again, though, if you do take the wrong one, that's not a problem as long as you do everything safely for the direction that you've gone. Now, when the sat nav talks about yards, that is pretty much a meter. And if you think about at 70 mile an hour, one mile will normally take you about a minute to travel. So if you are on a 30 mile an hour road, that's going to take you around two and a half minutes. So don't be in a massive panic, just pre-plan. Also in this video, by having the camera where I've positioned it, you'll be able to see how often I've been checking the mirror. 
and it's probably quite a lot more than what most people expect. The more that you know about what's going on behind you, the safer you'll be because you never know when there could be a pothole on the road in front of you or if somebody runs out in front of your car. By knowing what's going on behind you gives you that little bit more knowledge of how much brake you need to use. It also might be a case that you have to do an emergency stop to slow the car down behind you as well. But if you've still got some space to play with in front of you, then you might want to ease off the brake just to lessen the chance of that rear end accident. So the more mirrors che uh, mirror checks you do, the better. So on the sat nav, we can see that we're coming up to a roundabout and it wants us to turn left. After 100 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit Old Park Ridings. Now if you're unsure about indicating and you can't see the road, around 70 yards, so now would be a good prompt to do your indicator. And that's obviously on the 30 mile an hour road. Remember the rule is the speed limit of the road converted into meters because the sat nav isn't entirely accurate when it comes to distances. It may have a slight delay. So 70 yards is a good sort of middle ground. Now again on the sat nav I can see that I need to take the next road on the right. Turn right Again, on the sat nav, it's shown in 450 yards, I'm going to be turning left. Now, again, 450 yards, that's quite a long time. I can pre plan, so I can think about again doing some mirrors. What type of junction would I be going into? Do I need to be changing gear in a manual car? Also, just generally looking ahead, as you should always do anyway. So is there a pedestrian crossing coming? We can see the headlight reflection there, so again, we can pre-plan. They've been nice enough to let me go. At the end of the road, turn left, Bush Hill. So now we've got the prompt that it's the end of the road. Now remember, when it's a crossroads, the sat nav won't normally say at the end of the road, it will say take the next road on the left. So it's important again that you see the road markings. Now just to clarify, this route that I'm doing at the moment is not part of a test route, it's just on the way to one of my clients. So again we can see that we've got the traffic up ahead, the sat nav again showing us 240 yards to turn left. see again the sat nav saying turn left and then turn right again it is not saying the distance so it may not be the next road on the right so again really important that we look at what the sat nav say other things to be careful with with the sat nav as well sometimes if the road has a sharp bend the road name might change but the road markings show it's a continuation the sat nav will not tell you that so the sat nav might say turn right when you're actually in fact on the same road, so you don't need to indicate for that. And this is a good example. Turn right, then take the third right. So we can see again, it is the same road. We don't need to indicate for this one. So use your own eyes, make sure you know the surroundings. Now we can count the roads. So we've got two roads there, and it wants me to take this next road on the right. When you do reach your destination, the examiner will just say, thank you, continue to drive on. You won't have to park up unless the examiner specifically says that to you. One other thing to be careful of is do not pay attention to the speed limit on the sat nav. It's not entirely accurate. So you might see on the sat nav 
that you need to be doing 30 miles an hour when in fact the speed limit could be 40. Now that wouldn't be too bad because you're slightly under, but if it's the opposite direction and it's saying 60 and you're doing 30, that's obviously gonna fail you. So don't pay any attention to the speed limit. If it's displayed on the examiner's uh, sat nav, because it is not entirely accurate. It's not a way of them trying to catch you out or trip you up. It's just how the sat nav has been programmed. The examiners don't program the sat navs themselves apart from the route. So I hope that's helped so far. And I will now show you how to drive when it comes to following signs as an independent part of your drive. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the independent drive when the examiner asks you to follow signs. Now, the follow the signs uh, independent drive is done in one in five tests. So not as likely, um, but still a chance to practice this. Now, it's really important that you keep updating your mirrors because you never know when that sign is gonna be in view. So here we're gonna follow the signs to Wilson Abbey. And at the moment we can't see any signs, we can see there's traffic light signs. But now we can see that there's a sign for Waltham Abbey, so I need to be in the right lane here. And without that knowledge, it's gonna be a bit of a panic. So just keep checking your mirrors, know your surroundings, so you don't get caught out. It's not particularly common that you get a sign that late but it definitely can happen as you can see here. And this is actually one of the test routes that could be asked when doing your test at Enfield um, in North London. So the things to think about when you're doing the independent drive and following signs is number one, make sure that you're maintaining speed. If you're slowing the car down to be able to take in the information, the examiner is going to penalise you for that because you're slowing down, it's an inappropriate speed, you're causing people behind you to slow down as well. If you're doing a medical assessment, sometimes you might be watching this video for that uh, situation, the assessors will specifically ask you to follow the signs and the reason for that is because we want to see how you're able to process the information whilst approaching. So if you have a brain injury, for instance, and you're having to slow down to take in that information, and it's a sign of a cognitive issue as well. Obviously, if you're doing your driving test, that's not gonna be uh, the case, or hopefully not. So look at the signs and see how petite they can be. They don't necessarily have to be huge. They can be very small. Um, so if they're asking you to follow the signs to a motorway, for instance, remember when you're following the signs to, uh, towards a motorway, it doesn't mean that you're going onto the motorway, it's just heading towards. So if the sign has the M25, for instance, and it's in brackets, it's heading towards. If it's just a big blue square on the sign, like in this picture here, then it's actually going on to the M25. And remember, that won't be asked on your driving test. The examiner is not allowed to take you on motorways. Remember, if you do want to have a look at how to drive on motorways, there's a video that I've put up and I'll put the link in the bottom description as well. Very important that you practice on motorways. The statistics show that the majority of accidents that happen on motorways are involving drivers under the age of 25 and it's purely down to a lack of education. So along this route we're following the signs to Waltham Abbey. Now the examiner might then say okay I'd like you to now follow the signs leading to somewhere else. So it doesn't have to be one destination the whole time and it can even be location so like say on this brown sign here it might say follow the sign to the information point. So it's important to know uh, where the uh, what the signs are. Now, here the examiner will ask you to follow the signs to Harlow and Nasing. So we can see it's just at the 11 o'clock position, so we need to be in the left lane to be able to do that.
Now, a fault that does commonly happen here is people are so worried about where to go that they don't then acknowledge the national speed limit signs because they're only looking at the sign, say, in Harlow as a confirmation. Now, if the examiner doesn't say anything, you continue to follow those signs to that last destination. When the examiner wants to change the plan, they will tell you that in good time. So they'll say you either follow the signs to uh, information point, for instance, or they might just say, thank you, that's the end of the independent drive. I will now give you directions um, as and when is appropriate. So we know from that sign that we just drove past that Harlow is left here, first exit. Again, just looking into my road, I can see it says Harlow, there's a hidden side road on the right, and I'm going towards Dobbs Ware. So, I hope that bit of the video has helped, and if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.